welcome back, dear friends. It's a very exciting one, this one, because if you remember the last one, I had finally taken to pieces, finally got to it working, taken to pieces uh, Victoria's body that was made of acrylic and all sorts of other laser cut bits and pieces. I've now got it painted up and I'm now, this very moment, or shortly, going to start reassembling it with the minimum of instructions. Let me show you. Look! Oh, look at all the exciting engineering bits and particles and things. Ever so exciting. Thought I'd spray the servos up. Copper! A little bit of variety. You don't want too much of any one colour. Obviously most of it's going to be brass. Look at that. I mean, that just looks so lovely. Um, and some silver bits and pieces. And it's... And then, of course, all the lovely metallic, real proper shiny metallic bits and pieces. Now, I have got to put all that back together with... I did take the precaution of putting a couple of in-depth notes together to let me know where to fix the two servo motors. But other than that, it's down to my brain. Hopefully it's not too muscular today. I'm not going to film it because I'm always nervous when I've got the camera on and I rush things and make mistakes. I will get back to you when hopefully that resembles a lovely metallic version of the original. I think I'm going to start with this bit, because that's lovely. That bit that I based on the old um, French automaton, which is beautiful, the one that writes things. I'm going to start with that because that involves ten parts plus a numerous number of little M3 fixtures and fittings of a brass nature. I'm going to get that together because then that'll leave slightly less other bits to sort out. Ta-da! That was really enjoyable, I have to say. It's been really enjoyable putting this back together now it's painted. It's like I've said it several times. It's like when you decorate something. And the art of decoration, what, wallpapering, is to prepare the walls first. And then to paint, prime them with the um, wallpaper paste. And it's all boring because you don't actually see anything. And then you finally put the wallpaper up and it just goes on beautifully with no lumps and bumps. And that's what this is like. I've been desperate to do this for days since I got it laser cut and painted. And it just looks all oh, shiny things that go round and round. It doesn't get much better than that. Right, stop admiring your handiwork and get on with the next lot. Less now. Let's see how it goes. Several hours later, and here it is. How exciting. Oh, look, lots of moving parts. On this side, we've got the motive force with the little motor there and with all the lovely gears and everything and they look really nice silver against the um, brass and you can just see the copper servo motor one of them in the back that looks nice and it's so lovely the ball chain catching the light along with the polished bearings and we've got the front with the two clickety clackety things and then on this side we've got the simulated wax drum that would hold in Victorian times her voice, the singing voice and something to hold a stylus and some bellows that don't do anything but obviously you need, do need some bellows on a steampunk machine. Now I'm very pleased with that. Only thing I would say... Too much brass! Hmm at the front I think visually so the exciting thing is as you know my predilection for not having things like cogs glued on to stuff that don't do anything but there comes a time and all that so with the aid of a roll of really soft copper which is large enough I think it's about four millimeters diameter to be pipes I reckon it needs some sort of piping to run along the front and possibly with the aid of some of this which is the most amazing stuff um, I did drill in this side um, two little holes here and uh, there so that it could have something to sort of take the sound up some pipes or something I'll have a look at that that's fun that's purely decorative. I've also realised I, I didn't, unlike um, 
the Florence one. I haven't got any engraved bits and pieces. This is a lot smaller than her one. Um, but I'll have a think. Again, wherever you look, and this is what I treat as one of my main criteria, there's lots of interesting things. I can look, look there and there's that happening. Look down here. Look through there. Just look back there. There's so much going on. And the funny thing is, as I've mentioned before, when I start doing something like this, building one of these things, I always think, oh, there's no way I'm going to fill up the available space. Oh, am I going to manage it? And I've learnt over the years that I will. That once you just get enough start, you know, once you just have a basic idea, like the one I drew on holiday, it is going to take up every available inch or millimetre of space, right down to most of the inside being filled up with the two um, servo motors. There's a bit of space in there. Oh, damn it, Janet. But not much at all. It's finished. I don't think I, there's room to add anything else. I'm really pleased with it. What I've done, most of it is still the same as it was, along here a little bit of copper just needed something else some other color I'm really pleased with that and you know to make the, the little clamps for it out of cable clips luckily I had some black ones and some little turned down tubes of metal nothing is too much trouble but it does look really nice and sort of goes off around there comes up here and then twiddles about a bit and ends up I don't even see it now it's so much going on with one of those sparklet cylinders, which always looks nice, sort of like a little pressure cylinder. I don't know whether you can even see that. Catch a glimpse of it every now and again. And you can see that's where the copper pipe ends up. So that's nice. And then finally, I just remembered I'd got some of these little red spirit levels, which are used on some of the machines. And that's lovely. That just looks really interesting, because as it moves, the top of the liquid jiggles around. So that's nice, and then obviously, finally adding these two um, to the stylus thing. So that's going to look lovely, especially as most of it's not going to be seen, because she's not going to turn her head that far, but I just, oh, you know me. All of that is going to have to be seen through this window. So it'll be about there. So I'm going to have to have illumination as well, which will be fun. Um, but, you know, as as she turns, I just I love the effect that that gives as she will, her head will turn, her body will turn as well, with all the other movements going on. I think someone is trying to tell me something. You trying to tell me something, Ziggy? Is it three o'clock? Is it time for a walk in the park? Mmm, on the bike, really fast. We go hunting squirrels together, shall we? Yeah. It's lovely in the afternoons because I think she, that's how she sees it. She sees it as us going hunting together. Because me on, she's not on the bike, I hasten to add. I'm on the bike and she runs so fast and then stops dead and points at squirrels. It's beautiful. It's a lot of joy to watch her. Right, anyway, stop talking about that. I will catch up with you soon when I've got that fixed into the cabinet, into her house. Another day. And it's time to get on with some electronicals because we need to connect everything up now. I'll show you what we're doing. Obviously that's finished, so that is ready. Follow my finger. Oh, I've lost it. Where's it gone? <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I need a bigger workshop. We can now fix the body in there. Uh, but then because of the stupid way I designed it, it's sort of catch-22. Once you put that in, the lid has to be across the floor and you can't get to anything behind it. So, dear friends, focus. I would love just to get all this assembled, but you know me, I've got to finish sorting it out. So the next thing to sort out is the connections for everything. Now the wires that are poking it are for the two speakers that are hidden behind there for her voice. And also, if you remember, if you've watched previous videos, for the 7805 voltage regulator, 5 volts, that uses this as a heat sink. So not that much done, but I now need to connect up the two servo motors, one to look up and down, one to look left and right there, and 
of the three servo motors in her head. One, two that make her eyes look up, down, and left and right, and one that makes her blink. That's right, something like that. Anyway, so consulting the handy postcard that comes with the TNZ, I've been trying to work out how to connect all these, which pins are taken up with the audio board, and I have studied it long and hard and marked it out. Look what's just arrived in the post. I've never used this before. It's so that you can put wires in, and I have a multitude of wires, um, and try and sort of arrange and organise them so that Victoria, that's Victoria, can actually rotate her body without getting all tangled up. I've extended all the wires, and the wires from her neck, and I've threaded them through some of this lovely metalliticized, it's not actually metallic, but it really does look metallic, um, cable shroud that I use for the um, heraldic clarion door horn, doorbell thing, um, and it just slipped over a treat, so that's nice. Also did the same with the stir servo motors, so I've got them, and that's also nice because if you, you know, something else, so as this turns and will be illuminated, you just catch a glimpse of some nice copper braided stuff, much nicer than boring wires. This stuff is like large Lego. You can unsnap it and you can open it up to poke cables through. It's, I realised that it, it was even a thing from the laser cutter. Here's the laser cutter, it's got two lots, one there, so when it moves left and right, you can see all the wires and things, and even a pipe carrying um, pressurised air to the nozzle goes back some some and there's another one there, so as the whole thing moves, it's, it's such a clever idea. I think I've slightly overestimated the size I need, considering how many wires I've got, because um, I'm not sure whether this is actually going to fit inside, if there's enough room, but we'll sort it out one way or t'other. So the next job, which I've been prevaricating over, you know, I love doing the practical stuff and the mechanics and all that, just covering everything with um, all sorts of copper things, but it needed to be done, that's my excuse. So tomorrow I am going to get on with the electronics. I've decided the way I'm going to do it is not just to start soldering everything together in the hope it all works. Generally I have to say it does, I'm very pleased about that. Get her fixed inside her home and then just extend all, well I've extended the wires, have them all coming out and then using breadboard just to plug them all in, check it all works, I can easily swap them around if they don't get it all working, then start soldering things together. Many apologies, I've just realised it's about two days later and I haven't made any videos because I've just been getting on with it and forgetting everything else because it's been most enjoyable. Right, what we've been doing is sorting out a way of connecting that to that. And after much cogitation and rumination, I ended up coming up with this idea. Unplug that. These 15mm brass copper uh, brass plumbing fittings are the perfect size. If you turn down one of these multi-connector sockets or male socket plug things, they just push in perfectly and then you can glue them in. Um, and the great thing is that then on the other end you can have one of these antique brass shower hoses. This is just gluing, hence the tape. And also one of these other connecting tap connectors, I think they're called, and the female plugs, sort of, um, without turning down or anything, you just take them out of the metal things they come in, they glue into the end of them. And then they will plug together and actually tighten up. It's fantastic. Now, I've got ones with five connections. That's five. Because what I need are these. I've got the 12 volts that's fed in nice high current thick wires. A signal ground for the uh, serial communication, just in case, thought it'd be a good idea. Nought volts, major nought volts, nice thick cable, and then grey and white for the um, TX and RX serial communication. I think I mentioned before, but the, the next big step is starting to wire it up, and prevarication, I think I've had to gone through this with previous inventions. It's a, I don't know why it's a big step, but it just is, it seems. 
So I try and find everything else that I can possibly do that's sort of a sequence, simple sequence of steps. Hence the fact I'm connected to connecting it all up. Then I'll be able to not come up with anything else to do, don't think, and actually start wiring everything up. Then it's connecting it all to the computer and seeing whether I can get all the servo motors working. Then, which I've just forgotten, I need to connect up. The person sensor, the most exciting sensor in the world, getting that connected up because the whole idea, if you remember and watch previous videos, is that I want Victoria, having discovered that these people sensor things are even a thing, I want her to be able to watch people, a group of people, as they come around to listen to her sing. I want her to look up and down, left and right sort of coordinating her eyes along with her neck movements and all that stuff um, so that's the ultimate goal of all this plus of course the singing and the playing music right stop talking get on with it another day testing testing a one two three I've connected this up to the 12 volt supply via its lovely new thing bit of wire at the moment because I've got another one of these pipes but I'll get one so 12 volts being fed in there from there that then goes all through there, doing its stuff. It seems to be working okay. Lights are flickering. Then it comes, well, 12 volts comes through here. A ruined boot. Look, there's a new thing on the back of Victoria's home. And then in its side, and this is what I've been prevaricating at, not getting started, but have finally got started. It comes in there through some capacitors through into the voltage regulator that's on the back and then back out to my multimeter which is stating very clearly 4.95 of your very best of voltaires that'll do not quite five but near enough and that's what's going to run everything else that's why i'm hoping that with the all the um, current taken by the servo motors they're going to be all over the place having a nice big capacitor there just to store a little bit of backup and having the 12 volts going straight through the whole thing, um, hopefully that won't, to, uh, won't interfere with anything and it'll allow everything to work properly. But that's the first thing. That means that I've wired everything up properly so far and I won't have to connect everything to there and then find everything is destroyed. Right, let's connect some other stuff up. Another stupid mistake. What an idiot. I've just started to wire up one of these amazing amplifiers, absolutely amazing sort of switch mode amplifiers of some sort, class D ones, incredible things. That's it in the middle, forget having huge heat sinks to produce, to get rid of lots of heat. That's it and it works up to 20 watts per channel. Incredible, but anyway, volume controls, let's talk volume controls. Well, here's the one that's on the back of the Is It Time For Tea machine. I thought that's quite nice. It's also very powerful because it goes up to 11, so I thought I'd do another one of them. Like so. Nice little wooden knob, I'll get stained up. Then I realised there was nowhere on the back to put it. Because the heat sink was down there. I put this here. We're limited in height because obviously everything has to fit underneath that point. So, executive decision, whatever it is, I've unscrewed the heat sink and I'm cutting the bottom off, like so, and then I'm going to file it round and hopefully it can go just down there. Isn't it silly, the things that you think of? That couldn't really be any lower because it needs room for the pipe to curve away if it's sitting on a tabletop. Oh, the things I don't think of. I've got the speakers wired up. How exciting. There are the speakers hidden away in the back. Got the wires going down. Oh, look. That's what I was talking about. It's nicely cut off. That looks very nice like that. And the volume control. Florence... What? Florence Project... Oh, I put the wrong name on. It's the... Hang on a minute. Oh, I don't know what I've done. I think I made a new... I designed a new dial and I've cut the wrong one out. Oh, well. Never mind. It's all glued on now. <laughs> Ridiculous. And this is what the inside looks like now. Yes, we've got the sort of bus bars, so to speak, the junction for the 0 volts and the plus 5 volts, hopefully if I've got everything the right way around. Capacitators, and there's the wonderful amplifier, mounted nicely, 
with its analog volume control. So actually, I could attest that because I think it's reaching about the length of a normal video. So let me wire everything up. We'll see whether the amplifier works. I really do need a bigger workshop. Ridiculous, I tell you. 12 volts going into here, and then this is connected via that to her new home. I've connected the transmit and receive, the serial communications, through the wires that go into here. Teens is powered by a separate 5 volt supply because I'm not sure whether you can run it on um, the USB and something else. I've got to look that up. Amplifier's wired up and he's on. Let's, oh, this is nerve wracking. No smoke's been released yet, which is good. Let's try and tune first of all. Manual tune. Ooh. We've got the plucking happening. Ooh, I can hear a note. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. I'm just going to tweak. Ooh. That is so exciting. Let's turn that down a bit. That is so exciting. That means so many things are working as they should. That's brilliant. It means the mega in there is requesting information from the teensy that's then saying, yes, okay, and sending it back and producing the audio and the amplifier's working. Right, ooh. Let's try playing a tune. I'll just stop it first of all. And that stopped. Let's see what it does. Now it's been sitting in here for weeks throughout the holiday in very hot and cold temperatures, so I don't know whether it's going to work. This will be the telling thing. Ooh. There's still a bit of a timing issue, but... That's fantastic! Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled to bits. And if I turn this to... Yeah! That starts playing. That sends a command back to the team to say stop playing. Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled. That is so exciting. I can't tell you. A really major step forward. Well, I think that definitely will be the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions or queries, please um, let me know. Ask them in the comments. Uh, click the bell button and the other bits and pieces. Look forward to seeing you next time. We're finally getting on with it and making big steps. Brilliant!